Hello everyone, I am Grandmaster Alexander Kostinyuk and I will comment for you today my game from the recent European Team Championship in Novi Sad, Serbia. I was playing on the first board against Monica Calceta, who is the current Spanish champion. I started the game with e4 and Monica played e5. Surprise, that was not really something that I was prepared for. Knight f3, knight c6, and here I decided to surprise my opponent as well, choosing instead of my favorite Rui Lopez a calmer Italian game, and played bishop c4. After some thought, Monica replied bishop e7. It seems that both opponents are playing a game of who will be surprised the most. Bishop e7 is another unexpected choice, and we now have the Hungarian defense. Here I was already playing on my own and opted for d4, which is the most popular reply here. My opponent replied d6, since after e takes d4, knight takes d4, the game transposes to the scotch game. After d6, I continued the game by playing d takes e5, my opponent played d takes e5, and since I didn't want to exchange the queens immediately here, thinking that I can cause my opponents more trouble with the queens on the board, I played bishop d5. After some thought, my opponent here played bishop g4. Instead of this move, during the game I expected another move for black, which is bishop d7. Black continued with bishop g4. I spent quite a bit of time here and finally decided to take on c6 immediately. The main goal of this move is to weaken the black pawns on the queen side. Probably castling king side here would have been stronger since it will leave white with more possibilities. First of all, after castling, white threatens now to win the pawn on e5 after bishop takes e6, queen takes d8 and knight takes e5, which is not possible right now since if instead of castling I take on c6, and then after b takes e6, I take on d8, rook takes d8, knight takes e5, I will get checkmated after rook d1. I took on c6 immediately, bishop takes e6 check, b takes e6, and here I played queen e2. My opponent continued her development after knight f6, knight b to d2, bishop d6, knight c4, castle h3, bishop h5, bishop g5, queen e7 and here a normal approach for white would have been castling king side and then trying to use the weaknesses on the queen side however i never look for the easiest route i started a somewhat risky plan with an attack on the king side and castling on the queen side and that's why i played here g4 bishop g6 knight f to d2. Before this move I spent some time calculating very difficult and complicated lines that start with h4, h6, h5 and here bishop takes e4 loses in view of bishop takes f6, bishop takes f3, bishop takes e7, bishop takes e2 and white here wins with knight takes d6 or bishop takes d6. So after h5, black can just play bishop h7, and after bishop h4, queen e6, it seems that white has to exchange the bishop on h4 for the knight on f6, and that's why at the end I opted for knight f to d2. The game continued with h6, bishop h4, and here my opponent started not to play very well. She played rook a to b8. Queen e6 was the strongest move here for black with the idea of getting rid of the pin as soon as possible and transferring the knight via d7 to the queen side, closer to the opponent's king. During the game I was hoping that black's attack on the queen side will be stopped, uh, for example after f3, knight d7, queenside castle, a5, bishop f2, a4, a3, and that my attack on the king side will be more dangerous. But at least it would have been more interesting and more sharp for black. In this line, black has mutual chances to counterattack on the queen side. Instead, my opponent played rook a to b8, and after f3, she continued to play in a strange way and moved her bishop to c5, which leads black to big problems. I think queen e6 here would have still been better. After bishop c5, I played knight b3, bishop b6. Black spent two precious tempi to move the bishop from d6 to b6, which doesn't help black 
with her attack on the queen side and at the same time it gave me time to finish my development so here of course i castled queen side finally here my opponent played queen e6 after this move i spent some time and to be more precise i spent 15 minutes looking for ways to stop the knight d7 maneuver at some point i almost played queen d3 when suddenly realized that black has a very strong reply after queen d3 which is knight d5 using the pin of the bishop on g6 and the pawn on e4. After some hesitation, since I also thought about the uh, possibility to include the moves a4 then a5 and then playing bishop g3, I decided to play bishop g3 immediately. My opponent played knight d7 and here, although the exchange sacrificed, rook takes d7 looked very tempting. I decided that after h4 at some point the sacrifice can become even more devastating. For example, if we look at the variations after rook takes d7, queen takes d7, knight takes e5, white has more than enough compensation, for example after queen e6, f4, bishop h7, f5, or if after knight takes e5 if black plays queen e8 then white will play queen c4 king h8 knight takes e6 but since it was the team competition i prefer to be really careful with sacrificing material in team's events since my teammates feel more secure if i have the same amount of material or even more material so that's why i played h4 my idea is simple i want to attack on the king side and that's why my opponent played f6 trying to stop the pawn's movement of course i continued it anyway by playing g5 here my opponent replied without any thinking she took on g5 with the f6 pawn and it's a decisive mistake more stubborn would have been to play h5 and after g takes f6 g takes f6 black's king is weaker than his white opponent and that gives white better chances still the game is not over yet in this line the game can continue with King b1, rook f to d8, knight takes b6, a takes b6, rook h to g1, king h7, and here bishop e1 looks strong with the idea of bishop d2 and then queen e3 creating deadly checkmating threats. In the game it didn't happen since my opponent took the pawn on g5. After f takes g5, I took the pawn, h takes g5. Here after h5, rook takes d7 works very well queen takes d7 knight takes e5 and before sacrificing the rook i saw here a very nice variation which starts with queen e8 f4 bishop f7 f5 g6 and here i was very happy to notice the knight g4 move the knight cannot be taken now due to queen h2 and then queen h8 or queen h7 checkmate and after queen e7 knight f6 check king h8 bishop e1 followed by bishop c3 is winning for white but in the game this variation didn't happen since my opponent after knight takes e5 played queen e6 but it only helps white since after f4 bishop e8 i have an extra tempo since i'm playing f5 and attacking the queen on e6 at the same time and after queen e7 i'm closing the king side and the h file by playing g6 black's position is totally lost because white has two strong ideas to take on h5 rook takes h5 then rook h8 check queen h5 check and then queen h7 checkmate and also another idea is to give a check on c4 by playing queen c4 so the game continued with queen g5 check king b1 bishop e3 rook takes h5 queen takes g3 here of course rook h8 doesn't work since black will just take on h8 and after queen h5 will play bishop h6 but another idea which is queen c4 check works very well and black gave up here since mate in a few moves is unavoidable it was a very interesting game, a nice win and a very good start for me which gave me enough self-confidence to play well in this tournament and at the end to score 6 out of 8 with 4 wins and 4 draws and to win the gold medal on the first board as well as the gold team competitions.